Good evening, good day, and greetings wherever you're listening, and thanks for tuning in to the BAM Nation podcast. My name is Roy, and joining me this morning is my good friend and colleague, Mr. Thorncliffe. How are you doing? I'm very well, mate, and yourself? I am not too bad. It's It's been a little while since we had a show um, on the air, and after a lot of deliberation and contemplation, um, the wheels are put in motion, thanks to yourself. Um, to put something together and get it back on, get back on the airwaves. But um, yeah, just um, we'll see how we go. It's um, we've got a few little sections and themes to go through. Hopefully, we're not here all day. But um, yeah, it's definitely a work in progress, and um, we'll see how we go. But uh, yeah, just a, a rather a, a short, not a really lengthy podcast. Just more of a. a quick in and out for your, your drive to or from work. Unless you live five minutes from work. <laughs> yes. Or four hours. Well, then you could listen to it ten times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what, so basically the rundown, we're going to have what we call the games room or the library where Thorncliffe and I will discuss uh, a title or a game that we've been playing recently. Um, we'll also then move into the question which um, will be a post that Thorncliffe will put up on the page, which he did earlier this week in preparation for this show. Um, we'll have Bam Nation Recommends, um, which will either be a TV show, movie, or anything really out there that we've come across and just want to talk about. And Maybe you haven't come across it, or and it could be up your alley. And then we'll finish off with the Revelant... The, the Reverend Thorncliffe's Salty Sermon. That sounds nasty. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> Ten-year-olds, beware. <laughs> yes, yes. So... I have a, a rather um, light one this week, I think, before I, I really get into it, so... Yeah. No worries. Well, let's get into it. Let's go to the games room. So, Thorncliff, which game do you wish to talk about today? Uh, so, recently, uh, we just had uh, Borderlands 3 uh, has just come out. The big title that we've, we've really been, uh, well, I've, I've been been waiting on for, for quite a while. Uh, big fan of the, the, the franchise. So, a uh, lot of talk between mates about the, the co-op and... Uh, being able to play together and, and all those kind of things. So I uh, was quite excited for that. Uh, first first got it and uh, jumped straight in. They've got four new Vault Hunters uh, that are there. So uh, the one that, that everybody, I think, was, was really excited for was Slack the Beastmaster. So uh, when I, I first started up the my first playthrough, I, I uh, went straight for, for Flack uh, and he really hasn't disappointed uh you get a pet with you uh and uh you can also have like special uh sort of uh like uh like a, a power that that will, will shoot certain beasts out of your hands and, and stuff like that to go after uh the enemies uh fully uh uh developed through your your skill tree so they do get bigger and stronger and better uh as you you build your skills and and um, spend your skill points through the, the tree there. Uh, Story-wise, uh, Borderlands has always been a fun title, I think. So uh, very tongue-in-cheek, very, um, you know, those pushes the boundaries a little bit and stuff like that. There, There's always some kind of little bit of controversy when it comes to something in a, in a Borderlands title. So uh, this one here is the, the same. Uh, so basically, the Calypso twins are the the two sirens that have taken over the galaxy and are in control with the the children of the vault, and and basically you're going after those. So uh, I don't really want to get too much into the the story wise because it is better for for everyone just to to play through. Uh, the guns was a, a very big thing when they uh, were were advertising Borderlands Three. So they said there was over a billion guns in it. And a billion, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely a huge amount of guns in it. So, uh, as a you, you're playing through, there is so many different types of 
weaponry and uh, when you, you go up against the bosses and stuff, it's really good to try and not sell off all your, your, your weapons beforehand. So there is some very challenging uh, bosses in there that you'll need different types of weapons and different types of perks on those weapons to, to take full advantage of, of how to defeat the, the bosses with shields and, and uh, stuff like that. So uh, overall right now, I've, I think I've got a level 30 Beastmaster. I've also got a level uh, 15 uh, gunner. And uh, that was basically, I, I went around to a, a mate's house the other night and set up my PlayStation on his old TV and he had his PlayStation on his new TV. And we just had a, a basically a Wi-Fi night where we both sat down and, and played through uh, the first, well, the first planet would have been Pandora the first time. So uh, that was really fun, like really good to, to be able to do uh, with the co-op and it, it really helps out with the bosses as well. So uh, You can do but, that in your own house. <laughs> we can do that in your own house, but you can't sit there and just have a chat with your mates and all that kind of stuff. It was just a good night, you yeah. know, like a, a, a join it up. But yes, I do, do realise the, the thing that I could have just sat on my couch and done it done it like that but um i got out of the house i guess so that's a plus is it um mm. now, did you have to sell your soul to do that uh yeah probably uh i don't <laughs> i don't really like leaving the house but um yeah no it was good good fun and uh yeah overall borderlands 3 100 percent i'd i recommend it out there to to anyone that's a fan of the franchises or even just first person shooters very challenging very fun game i found myself dying quite quite a bit at the start with a, a few of the the bosses there but uh once you get in there and, and start to to realize the certain weak points and uh what guns to use with them to to defeat what type of armor they're using and stuff like that there it, it does get get quite simple but yes it's a very challenging game you will find yourself uh running off to try and level yourself up a bit more before does, coming back and taking on some of them. Does it follow a story on from the, the previous games, or is it... Uh, I think it's set about three or four years after number two, so after Handsome Jack's defeated and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, but the Vault Hunters are, are all new Vault Hunters. Okay, then. I mean, for, for me personally, I, I think I played Borderlands 1. Yep. About ten years ago. Um I own Borderlands 2, but I totally forgot I did. <laughs> but um, I think it was free a couple of months ago, wasn't it? Yeah. And, yeah, the handsome uh, collection. Have you managed to um, have a chance to play it on VR? Because not the Borderlands 3, but I think, didn't they make Borderlands 2? Yeah, Borderlands 2 was on, they have got it on, on VR. I, I haven't played it yet. That is something that I, I will be open to once I, I, I think I'll see it a drop. Once it drops a, a little bit on the um, the pricing, I think I might might jump on and and have a go of it. But uh, yeah, overall, I, I I really like the the um, just the normal experience over the VR. I think. No worries. No but worries. Uh, I've just got some more little, little bits of information that come through from two uh, K. So they've sent me a. a a bit of information about what's going on with it. So uh, this month, it's, it's actually been 10 years since uh, Borderlands Borderlands was released. So they're doing a like a five-week anniversary celebration. So uh, basically in, in week one, from the 1st to the 8th of October, they've got all bonus boss loot. Week two, uh, rare spawn hunt. Week three, show me the Iridium. So you'll be able to uh, build, a, build up your Iridium levels there. Uh, week four is Mayhem on Twitch, and week five they've got a, a secret uh, coming for it. So uh, basically, there there is a heap of, of end game content that is it is, that you you can play through once uh, you complete your, your level fifty and you complete the game. So it looks like they they are investing quite a lot of um, time into the the game. So. Uh, I don't see it going away very quickly. But yeah, that's that's uh, that's me for for Borderlands Three for now. 
Okay, then. Thank you, uh, Thorncliffe. I might just quickly add on one other one that I've I've played. Okay, so, then. Uh, it's a cheap one. It's a very uh, quick playthrough, but uh, I think it deserves a mention, and that's Erica. So Erica was just released uh, recently on, on PlayStation. It's a, a fully live-action game. So live action, kind of like the, the choose your own adventure games, like a telltale kind of thing and stuff like that. But uh, very well worth a playthrough. I think it's only about 13 or $14. Uh, full web of uh, different uh, endings and, and ways the story can go and all that kind of stuff. So very interesting playthrough. And I think that, you know, for the, the $14 or something, if you want to sit down and, and have a, a game night where you can sit and play a, a game with your missus and you just you just choose a a a uh, basically it's, it's it's like sitting down and watching a movie. You're just choosing which way it's going, like a bandersnatch, if you will. Cool. So you sit there and you watch your cutscenes and then just pick and choose which way you want to go. Yeah, yeah. Basically, as you're going through, and you play it all on your phone as well. So. Uh, what I found good about that is that you're doing all your decisions and, and all that kind of stuff on your phone. So you find that you don't sit there stuffing around with the phone while you're playing it as well. So, which you usually can find yourself doing with a couple of those telltale games and stuff like that. And this one here, fully controlled with your phone. So, uh, yeah, good to sit down and, and, and have a playthrough. So it's uh, Erica for anyone that, um, yeah. And how long's that been out for? It's just. Uh, just over a month, I think. So when they did the Tokyo Game Show, they yeah. had them come out and basically said, oh, by the way, it's out, it's out now. So, uh, yeah, 100% live action thriller. Oh, I'm just... Because it sounds very similar to um, Hidden Agenda, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So Hidden Agenda's been out for quite a while. That's on the play link and... Um, yeah, that's where you can have a, a couple of people playing yeah, at the same time as well. Because that's what me, because my missus, she just thinks games are on phones and iPads. Yep. Um, but with the play link, we actually sat down one night and I had the app on my phone and she had it on hers and we actually sat and watched it and we actually got quite into it. And yeah. the decisions like in Hidden Agenda, like you could make a decision, but it was up to a vote. So majority yep. ruled. Yep. Or there were certain times during the game where um, you could steal it off them. Yeah, or you could override it yeah. and say, no, nah, yeah. fuck you, yeah. I want to go through the door. <laughs> yeah, so there's a couple that are good like that there. That says, as there is that uh, that one play link on the, the hidden agenda. There's also a, um, a Planet of the Apes one, which is, is very similar to that as well. So uh, any good like sit-down party play kind of games, they're... They're, yeah, they're, they're pretty good, those Playlink ones. Cool. But yeah, it's not part of the Playlink. No, 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 I know that. It just, yeah. it just, the way you described it just reminded me of those things. Um, the um, Hidden Agenda and a few of those other Playlinks where a few people can all sit around, put the app on your phone, and everybody gets to, to have a crack. Yeah. And yeah. sit down and like an interactive movie. Mm. All right, and what game have you got for us? I have got a game that I didn't think I would buy. I didn't really want to play it until I played the open beta, and that is Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh -huh. Which is a tactical shooter set in the island of Aurora. Um, about two Modern day? Yeah, uh, no, it's slightly into the future. Oh, okay. um, so it basically from the first cutscene there's an island in the Pacific um, bad guys have taken it over um, there's a USS cargo ship that's been sunk and they send in the ghosts to try and find out what's going on and basically your chopper gets shot down and you on your own and the bad guys are out to, to get you and you're basically out to take back the island for the um, for the people that um, that live there. Basically, there's two types of people that live on the island. You've got 
what they call skill tech so there's a, there was a company called skill tech technology which set this island up to work on um, and advanced technologies and drones and basically it's like Google or Apple setting up an island somewhere and just getting all these nerds out there to do their thing and then you've got homesteaders which are like farmers or hillbillies that well, they're not really hillbillies but basically just locals and then you know you've got the your um your arch nemesis your, or your, your baddies your baddies which um compared to wildlands wildlands you just had um el Sueño, who was just in a couple of cutscenes that i've always narrated over the top you never really interacted with him and it was whilst wildlands was was sort of fun to do in terms of running around and and doing your thing but there wasn't the story kind of lacked a little bit yeah whereas this one you've actually got a villain um who was played by the guy that was the punisher John Bernthal plays former ghost Cole D. Walker, and he's pretty, pretty good. Um, like, there's one scene, he's, he's like, all the scenes when he's there, he's just. A good presence. Yes. Probably um, in a similar way to Far Cry, where you had. Um, hey, Gamin. No, not so much him, the, the other one, the psycho. John. Yeah, all of them. All, all, like, you know, in Far Cry games, you've got your, your enemy and they're yeah. coming the cutscenes. Oh, Vass. Yeah, Vass. Vass. Vass three. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like that. But, you know, yeah, I have, I've only come across him a few times. But um, he definitely has that presence. And there's kind of like a story there that keeps you, keeps you moving forward. Um, you don't have your... your um, your squad like you did in Wildlands, you're pretty much on your own unless you play um, co-op online and team up with a few other people, which I haven't had the chance to do yet because I just enjoy... Sneaking around by yourself? Yeah, and you can actually go into... Like, there was a base two nights ago that I went into and pretty much snuck around, scoped the whole joint out, and then just... You just go through building by building, just stealthily taking them out, take out the snipers at the start, and you can move your way through. Um, the killer thing is, is that um, sometimes the helicopter or what they've got is like a drone plane will um, fly across the map, and you've pretty much got to be in cover. Um, lying down on the ground. They've also got um, promo camo, so when you're lying flat in the ground, you can actually roll in the mud and cover yourself up to go full hidden. Predator mode. Yeah, and if you don't have that, then these drones and the helicopters will pick you up and see you, and once they do that, they've got guys called um, wolves, which are Walker's special team of soldiers, and they will hunt you like you're a fox at a a fox hunt you know they will literally keep coming for you and when they when they've got you you lose your map you lose everything you've pretty much just got to run and hide or take them on and the wolves are a little bit harder to take down you can take them down but um there's just so many of them um it's, it's so with your so story wise you you get your shot down at the the start and you you on your own is there, there are other guys that you can meet up on the with on the island that are part of your team as well or or is it just you it's at the start it's just you then you go to a place which is like your base of operations at the division it's like the tower in destiny and mm. A lot of the criticism of this game is we've played this game before. We've just played Division 2. We've played the Division Destiny. It is sort of like that. You've got this central base on the island called Erwin. And there are characters there that you meet and they will send you out on missions. And you predominantly go do those missions on your own. There are other ghosts that you will come across. 
um, but they don't necessarily join you on your missions. Okay. So there's there's not like the the three the three muppets that follow you around talking shit about chewing coca leaves. And That's good. Which you can't. The only the only thing about that is you lose your sync shot. Which was cool in Wildlands. You could line up three enemies and then you line up the fourth and then just bang and everyone drops four enemies at once. You don't have that at this stage anyway. Whether it's in later in the game, not that I'm. I've played. I've put about six or seven hours into it, and I just feel like I've only scratched the surface. Is it something you're going to keep on playing though? Through the end game, I will. You will. It will okay. take. It'll take me a little while, just due to limited time. But I, um, I will keep chugging away at it, and putting a couple of hours in when I sit down. Um, I put a few hours in yesterday, and then after about nine o'clock, went and played a casual game of cricket on Cricket Nineteen. But that was just to let the heart rate settle before I went to bed. But it is. I I will play it. I can see a lot of people will say, oh, it's just the same crap over and over, but I enjoy it, and that's the main part. Um, yeah, well, the Ghost Recon games and the, the Tom Clancy's are very, um, I think they're a very niche genre for, for, for certain people that want to play it. They're more of a, a, a tactical um, shooter. Well, so and... far it does have that Tom Clancy story. Yeah, and a very you've got to be very... Um, I think invested in a lot of those things because like the division one I played um, once I got through to the, the end game stuff, I just, I just couldn't do it anymore. And I didn't even bother picking up uh, the division two. Uh, I think I played wildlands. Uh, I played it a fair bit because I enjoyed the co-op in it and the co-op in those ones was more just. Uh, Turn around and blow shit up fun doing stupid <laughs> shit with your mates you know like uh, getting all everybody in a helicopter and I'm like oh let's just go fuck some stuff up you know like and yeah but uh ghost streak on uh the uh it's yeah it, I, I don't really think they're the 100 percent the, the games that, that i really enjoy but um yeah they're as well, I said, as I said before, shopping. I didn't think I was going to pick it up, and then I played the beta, and there was just something about it. it was like this is, this is it's all right. Fun. This is, mm. it's because basically you've got to. I'm normally a run and gun, like I'll just go in and shoot the shit out of stuff. But in a way, you can't really do this. Um, and you spend Does it have a bit of a, a Metal Gear Solid feel to it. A little bit, and it, it. I mean, you've got gear scores for your for your weapons and stuff. Yeah, that's that's another thing I can't stand. It's <laughs> he's having to spend so much time doing research and all that kind of stuff for builds. Oh, and, you don't even. It, basically, if it's got a higher number, if the gun you pick up has a higher number than the gun you've got, swap it out and break the old one. Don't. Yeah. Um, I don't think it matters too much, but. As you level your gear up, your enemy's gear score increases as well. So yeah. it, you've got to move with the time, so to speak. But I mean, I'm I'm enjoying it so far, and that's um that's the main thing, I guess. Um, yeah. You know, I I have spent a, a whole chunk of the game in, in crouch mode, just going slow sneaking and just around. sneaking around, and I mean there's you know, if you sneak up behind someone and, you know, you pull your knife out and slice their leg then up, put your you put them in a headlock and slice their neck, it's their throat open. It's it's pretty cool and satisfying doing those silent takedowns. Um but out of yeah. ten, what are you giving it? At the moment I'd give it a seven out of ten. Yeah. It's not I mean it it's it is similar to games that we've played before, but um, the thing that puts this over, because I've played Division One and Two, and you know 
the enemies in those games are just sponges. And yeah. even when you think you've got a decent setup, overnight it changes so radically and turns your guns and everything into nerfs. This is, um, no matter what gun you've got, if you line up a headshot, you will take them down. That's good. Unless they've got um, like a helmet or a mask oh, on, yeah. and then yep. you've got to, they'll take two headshots. Good. That's good as well. Yeah, one thing it's just sponges and, and that was is just frustrating for me. You know, like when you 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 put in two clips into somebody and they don't die, it it, it does get quite frustrating. And the and the whole place is pretty much full of loot, so it's like you haven't got any issues with demos and all that kind of stuff. No, like there's always there's always something out there for you to pick up. It's occasionally enemies you you'll drop they'll give you a pair of pants or a pair of boots or something and they've got plenty of these little cargo crates spread throughout the place where you can pick up um guns or um that's like borderlands borderlands there is just loot everywhere although uh, there is a, a f i wouldn't say a fair chunk but from what i can see there is a fair bit of customization stuff hidden behind microtransactions where you've yes, got to get the I, i've seen that yeah but i mean uh, a lot of cosmetic as well i think um there was something that i was reading i'll see if i can bring it up while you continue talking but it's um yeah the, the how much oh. it can cost to to actually <laughs> get everything that's in it so but you don't need everything like oh, the thing is is like you've got how your ghost looks that's in that's in one menu. Then the other menu yep. is your gear score. So when you change out items on your gear score, it doesn't change the way your ghost looks. So once you've got your ghost looking pretty, then yep. you can pretty much leave it the way it is. And I'm happy. I've got the beret. I've got my um, my drone vest and a pair of cargo pants. What more do you need? But um, no, I'm interested to see where this story goes. The other thing you can do is, is um, like you find out pretty early that that Cole Walker is the enemy. Yeah. From the start, if you are so brave and bold, you can actually go hunting for Walker's lieutenants in order to find the location of Walker's base. And pretty much from the get-go, you don't have to play any of the story. You can just try and hunt him down and then try and take him on. Oh. Now, the game recommends you have a gear score of 150 plus before you go and do this. <laughs> <laughs> but I have um, I have read online that a couple of people have tried, it and give, tried to give it a go. And they've got so far as to get into Walker's base, find out his final location. Yeah. But they just cannot seem to get the job done because apparently there's um, there's certain things in that base that once they find out you're there, then it's yeah, they're just gonna mow you. <laughs> they're just gonna mow you down. <laughs> but um, I think it's cool. It's it's cool the way you can sort of do that if you are that way inclined. Um, and it's also got, like um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they've got the exploration mode where um, you basically, you've just got to um, go to a rough area and, and try and locate the, the objective as opposed to having a dot on the screen. You've actually got to go through and... Actually have a look for it, yeah. Yeah, and, and there is certain elements of the game where you've got to go pick up certain... Um, like wildlands i guess where you've got to investigate and pick up certain intelligence um and then you've got to piece together certain parts of intelligence and read through it to resolve that question or reserve that part of your the case so to speak mm. which is pretty cool um but other than that it's i'm having fun with it um i'm not really in it for the for the multiplayer like Ghost War 4v4 because I don't like online games because I'm not good at them. But um, I think it's at a certain point I'll probably try and team up with a rando and 
go see what fun can be had. All right, so um, yeah, I'll just I'll just jump and look quickly now through the, the transactions, and it does just basically look like it is the um, a, a lot of it was just all all cosmetic kind of things, but uh, up to twelve hundred dollars worth. <laughs> it looks like so. Which, you got a couple of extra bucks, and you want to make your character look extra snazzy, you know? Then um, yeah, why not? I guess. Hot you know, pink I, 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 when it comes to to a lot of the um, these, I, I think that yeah, sure. Let's just have a micro transaction if you want a, a certain skin or something like that. There, nothing's going to affect the actual gameplay or anything like that. If you want your character to look a certain way, yeah, but there also needs to be that one option straight out uh, where you're able to earn it through through game progression as well. So it shouldn't be just straight locked behind that paywall. If you want that thing, there should be a way that you can get it in game without without having it uh, behind a paywall. Well, does this kind of lead us on to the next section of the show? Uh, yes, it does. So let's get into the question. <laughs> All right, so uh, the question that I put out this week to everyone was uh, basically, uh, what is something that developers or publishers do which make you say, how dare you? So uh, we recently had a uh, little UN summit on climate change where we had a, a rather, I don't really want to go into to, uh, my personal thoughts, but uh, if we had a... <laughs> How good a, was that picture UN, this morning I sent? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we had a, a UN discussion on uh, video game development. And, um, yeah, if we had a, the question straight out, how dare you, what are the things that come up there? So uh, put it out to the, the you bammers out there and uh, got quite a, a decent um, response to it. So I'll go through a couple of them here that, that we have. So uh, Cohen Moore... Uh, has said, any time I see a roadmap, stop selling us a beta version of a game and give us the full experience at launch. So uh, in response to this, I guess that uh, whenever we see roadmaps and all that kind of stuff, there's a, a lot of the time it is for, for DLCs and season passes and and all of those kind of things there. So uh, you know what? It, it can get frustrating when I see something like uh, a Borderlands 3, for example, where it has a, another season pass for $80 on top of the $80 I've already spent on a, on a game. But uh, I am getting the full game. So I am getting the full game. And if I choose that, that I want to, to continue on and play the DLCs and all that kind of stuff, then, then yeah. Uh, otherwise, if we don't have a roadmap, we don't have some kind of thing like that, I think that... Uh, we're going to be starting to pay a hell of a lot more for video games if, if you want it that way. Sell, sell me the whole game, 150 hours worth of content. Um, it's going to be expensive. Uh, and you can kind of gauge, I think, uh, what they want to do after a game that's been released from a roadmap. So. Well, it, keep, it keeps their title relevant as well for some time after it. It's not like a movie or a... Or a... Or a TV show that just comes out and then that's it. It's it's keeping it on the shelf for for some time afterwards. Yeah. So uh, some of the favourite like DLCs and all that kind of things that that do go forwards, like um, a roadmap for Destiny Two right now. I think that if you you went through Destiny Two, you, you'd be upwards of about three or four hundred dollars now, wouldn't you? With with all of the the DLCs and the the add-ons and the yearly passes and and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and like, yeah, you probably would be. It's um, and you didn't really get much in the first game anyway. Yeah, um, still fun though. Oh, still. I I, I really enjoyed. Uh, Destiny and then uh, well Destiny 2 and then the the first lot of the DLCs um, I really enjoyed I haven't played much since since year 2 but um, yeah I, I think that that came with I wasn't willing to to pay that extra I don't think uh, I think, I don't with, think I'd had enough <laughs> I, think, I think when you've got games where you're paying about the same amount as a retail full game and you you're not really getting your value well 
are you getting your value for money for that amount with the expansions um, certain games I can understand why they do it and other games I can see where Cohen's coming from it's just especially ridiculous ones like uh, where you see that that it's it's really not going to to last out the time. No, and some sometimes you have got some games that by the time that their first part of the roadmap comes out, the game's already dead. Gone into yeah, it's disappeared. Battlefront, perfect example. Fallout seventy six. Fallout seventy six, hundred percent. Yep. Don't get me started on that game. <laughs> Reading Simulator 2018. Especially uh, when you bought the fucking 300. The mouldy helmet. <laughs> yes. Right, on to the next yeah. comment. Next Mark. one, next comment comes from uh, Mark Twana. It says, uh, how dare you not us allow us to invert the Y axis? So uh, when it comes to uh, shoot 'em up games and that, I just I don't understand people. I, I'm too uncoordinated, but uh, I know from a, a friend of mine that is in the military that uh, the, the reasoning behind him and the way that he he aims is because when I pull back and pull down on a on a um, thumbstick, that is me raising my rifle, and um, yeah, I never do. I never invert because I'm, I'm just uncoordinated, but I always like to invert back when I'm playing um, flight simulating games. Stupid dad joke. Stop playing on the Xbox. Get a PlayStation. There's no Y button. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cross. Josh, yeah. Josh Dowling <laughs> says, high progression behind microtransactions. Yes, 2K, I'm talking about you. It'll be NBA 2K20. So the Red Man didn't have a big thing to say about this, I think. Oh, probably. I mean, there are, yeah, there is certain, there is a lot of games that they force you. Like, I don't get, if you, how can I put it? If you buy a game, you should be, as, as you said before, you should be able to get everything by playing the game. But mm-hmm. there are certain times. Like, I haven't seen NBA 2K20, so I, I can only assume this by looking at some of these comments, is that play the game, and yes, you will get all the credits, and eventually you will get to wherever you're going, but if you give us 1995, bang, you can get there you really, really it. quickly. It's the same with um, like 2K... Two. Oh, you WWE game, so... Yeah. You know, you can get an accelerator booster for nine ninety or four ninety five or whatever that boosts your creative character like instantly, like a shot of steroids, or you can play the game and it'll take you three months to get to the same position. It's just I d I don't really like that. I don't like the loot crates. I don't like I don't like paying more money than what I've already paid out. Especially when it can affect online gameplay as well. Or pay to win, really. Pay to win, straight off the bat. Um, it was the same with Battlefront 2 when they brought it out with Darth Vader. Um, you know, pay a, a certain amount of money and you can, can get him now, otherwise it's going to take you... 724 hours. Yep, to, to get, get to up to the level that you can can unlock him for free. You know, and, and yeah, that... okay, it, it still needs to be reasonable as well, though. When, when it comes to um, unlocking something for yourself, you know, because, you know, they say that, oh, you can get him in game though, you can, but yeah, but it's got to be a reasonable amount of time before, for, for it to, to be able to unlock it, because otherwise it just turns into no fun, you're running around on a map, trying to play the game, and somebody that's paid the amount of money um, has got the, the booster character that just runs in and, and starts annihilating everyone. And the uh, I think that was the main reasoning behind uh, the game was dead before it even came out. Once people found that kind of stuff out. Well, I, no, in terms of battle, you talking Battlefront Two? Yeah. Well, I just played played the the campaign, and then pretty much that was it. Yep. Because by the time by the time I got my hands on it, and then jumped online, it was 
and you just couldn't compete. There was already people in there that were well overpowered to what you were, and you know, yeah, it was on to, to we've got Jack McDougall with a comment here loot crates that affect in game results. So, uh, Battlefront 2, we're talking here, he says he's refused to buy the game for that reason. I'm all for cosmetics, but when it starts to affect in game play, when you've already paid $80 plus for the game, it ruins the entire experience. Um, and I was a firm believer that I thought that Battlefront um, and Battlefront 2 could have taken on the, the likes of, of COD and, and Battlefield being dice that, that made it, you know, the same as your, your battlef Battlefields. It had the potential to be able to take it on, but I think they got greedy and it died before it even started. I'd be interested to see, um, from a financial perspective, perspective and we'll probably never see it is how much they make how much revenue is actual from day one release how much within the first couple of months of actually just buying the title itself and then how much money they actually do make on this cosmetic crap because um, if uh, the way they keep pumping it out there Somebody must be paying something because, like like everything else, I mean, if no one's buying it, you're not going to make it. Yeah, it's it's it's. I think it's one of those situations where they've seen a lot coming from the the mobile gaming um, area, where uh, straight off the bat with mobile gaming, it's a dollar here, a dollar there to to add extra lives, or you know, you you run out of lives on Candy Crush or whatever, and you. Pay a dollar and you'll boost you back up to unlimited lives for an hour or or something like that. And um, people are willing to do that. Like I, I think that like people like playing it on the train on the way to work or sitting on a dunny or doing whatever. You know, it's like that's how I get my pokey fix. A, people <laughs> people don't <laughs> see an issue with a dollar here or a, a dollar there. And um, I think that that's. Uh, they, they've, they thought that they could do it, and uh, with the the older generation of gamers, I think they were, were, were smartened up to it a bit. But with the oh, younger, I've never, I've never laid a cent down for a mobile game. Yeah, but we've got the 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 younger generation that's come through, which has grown up with the microtransaction and the all of this kind of stuff. You know, like Fallout, uh, the sorry Fortnite and stuff like that. There, they make absolute monster. Off, off their microtransactions and their V bucks and all that kind of stuff, and that has come from a, a purely free to play game, and the, it's just gone through the the absolute roof with the way that they do things. So, you know, it works for them, really works for them. Konami yeah, Kojima, so, yeah. Konami and Kojima. Uh, so, uh, you know what? I, I think it's a good thing that Kojima has has moved on. Uh, kind of a little bit upset that we didn't get to see what uh, he was bringing out, uh, well, started to, to bring out with PT, the playable teaser and and all that kind of stuff. But uh, Death Stranding has still got me very, very intrigued. Um, <laughs> no idea what the hell it is, what I think, is going on. But... I think you'll finish the game and still sit there and go, what the fuck did I just do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Get I'm I'm gonna get it. it. It's one of those things that I've I've been really, really waiting for, and I think that uh, anything with Kojima's name on it is a license to print money. So Kojima always seems to find a way of coming up with an idea or a game that defines a generation on a console. Yeah, and he's done it with. This Death Stranding, which I think will probably be, it, it, we're into the final phase of of the current generation. Yeah, and I we will see Death Stranding. I, I will say straight off, we will see Death Stranding as a launch title on the PS Five, as well as the the, the PS Four. So we'll see it in in um, November this year, and I, I believe that it'll be a launch title with the PS Five as well. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it, I, he just seems to come up with these cool games that aren't your normal 
They're just not your normal game that you would come up with and or normal ideas. Well, all... the, the Metal Gear Solid, Solid series um, is just a... It's phenomenal. Uh, from, like, Metal Gear Solid 5 was is just awesome. And I, I just... Yeah, I, I, I don't even know what, what else we can we can see him doing, you know, like it, it's, he's getting old as well. I'm sure they'll make some Japanese robot and <laughs> put his body in it <laughs> or take his brain out and transplant it across or upload him into the internet. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, even like the silent hills and, and stuff like that that he's done. So, uh, yeah, well, well, I guess we'll we'll see. I think it's, it wasn't Silent Hills when he he did it, um, which PT was was a part of. That was going to have Norman Reedus as well in it. I think and, so. But once they had their little little argument, and he's gone, well, screw you, I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, my idea and I'll take Norman Reedus as well. And, yeah. and Konami went, fuck it, let's go make another. Pro Evolution Soccer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and um, we've got Tim McLeod saying Battlefield Five. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what he's. he's um, no, me either. I never played it. Uh, enjoyable. I, well, you know, I, I, I like the the campaigns and all that kind of stuff. Battlefield One and Battlefield Five uh, have both had uh, little bits of issues, I believe, with their their campaigns. They're, they're not the um, best set out things. Uh, so, yeah, I'm a, a bigger fan of the, the Call of Duty campaigns and, and stuff like that. And really looking forward to the Advanced Warfare one this year. Uh, not Modern Warfare one this year. So, yeah. And uh, Ben Smith has <laughs> come up with a How dare you uh, force feminism into games? So, uh, let's know. Go, let's, my thoughts? Your thoughts? I. How can I say this? Let, well, let me put it this way then. <laughs> oh, you, okay, uh, then, right. How... So I've got, I've got daughters. Yep. And if they, as they get older, get into games, I can see that they will want to play a game as a main character, being a female. That I have no issue with, but yes. have the choice where, when I pick up the game, I don't have to play through as the same female. Let me be, you know, the the big bulky muscly guy. Yes, and so I can get to the chopper. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's um, I I can see certain games it works, but. And it's kind of like TV you, shows. What? It's kind of like TV shows today as well. Is, and I, and I ask this question, is like, I've never played The Last of Us, but in the latest trailer, they had... Yep, do it. Do it already. That Ellie with a kiss, right? Yeah. Does that need to be in the game? I think it sets Ellie up as a character. you got a uh, oh. good start of a feel to it uh, with um, regards to her in uh, the DLC from the first Last of Us. I forget what it's called. What's the um, guy's name in it? Joel. Joel. What is if Joel was kissing some other bloke? There's a, if you play through the game, <laughs> there is a there is a, 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 a gay character in the, the Last of Us originally, so... I don't, I don't, I don't want to get down this part, right? If it's part of the story and it has to be there, then I might not agree with it. But put it in there for all reasons. But if you're just putting it in there for the sake of we've got to put this in here because I think it's going to be a big part of um, at least character. It's the same with TV shows. It's the same with a lot of things that go on in society of today. There, there is a lot of things forced into not just games, but movies and TV shows. Comic and, books, perfect example. 
and sometimes you've just got to sit back and go, do you really need this in here? Does it, it doesn't do anything to the story. It doesn't do anything to any of the characters. It's just you've got an agenda and you're ramming it down our throats. Of doing it. So my, my thoughts basically here on this is that um, in gaming, I really don't see that things really hit the, the tip of the iceberg with that. Uh, comics, movies, uh, a whole heap of all that kind of stuff have uh, felt that uh, input into the the um, of the, the, the feminism and, and stuff like that, if you, if you want to do that, or any other kind of um, social justice group that is out there. Um, Magic the Gathering had it uh, a little bit uh, ago in regards to uh, thinly thin and um, scantily clad planeswalkers and uh, characters and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know what? It, it's people are playing this as a fantasy card game and all that kind of stuff. It should be really the last thing on your mind when you're doing something like this. Um, and in the end, there's some pretty badass female characters out there right now. Like Ellie for the Last of Us, strong character. Really, really good character. Um, we've always had people like Samus, um, the original badass there. We've also got uh, Lara Croft, who's a, who's there. Um, I think that uh, with regards to things like uh, this, I being put into an already established franchise where they need to the feeling feel they need to 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 push a, a female character in there if you will uh is it can be frustrating to me like if you want to do that then start making a new ip where the the, the main character is that strong female character that you want control is a game that has just come out recently with the strong female characters um and you know, there's, there's people going off about um, Gears 5 um, having the, the female lead in a Battlefield 5, which has got the females in there. Um, and you know what? Have them in there for all, all good. But, yeah, as you, you said just before, you know, I still want to play as that big bulky guy that uh, runs around that's a badass. And you know what? Do what you, you want kind of thing. Um Overwatch was a another thing that uh, came out that they felt the need that they had to, to tell everybody that one of the characters in it was gay, uh, or they had to tell that one of the characters is trans or something like that. It's does it does it there is is no there's no point there. to it. It doesn't change anything. It just it doesn't change anything. Exactly it's... right. Like for a game that that doesn't have anything to do with. You know, like a Overwatch and all that kind of stuff. You, you can just have a character that nobody cares about the backstory of because there's, there's, there is no backstory. There's no um, campaign. There's no uh, law behind it to to really need anything like that. So yeah, it's it's it can be frustrating. And and Ben has, has said here that that he's been playing PS3 lately and he's noticed quite starkly how games have changed this generation. It seems every major title has made concessions to include women who are made to look less attractive while the males still typify the perfect image of masculinity. Um, they've changed history and created Mary Sue characters. Uh, that's a bit... Yeah. <laughs> uh, not sure to say that, Mary Sue characters. But yeah, ed edgy humour is gone, you know. People can't... Uh, make jokes about things like this anymore. Uh, Borderlands Three, yeah, there's one <laughs> one of the bosses there that you actually have to shoot in the dick because that's his his critical point. And uh, well, I think it's it everyone's flashing, critical point. <laughs> instead of it coming up flashing critical like you do with a headshot, it says dicked. So whenever you shoot him in the dick, you just say dick, 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 come flashing up all across the screen. Uh, anyway, he's gone to edgy humor has gone. Females are made into main characters, particularly male-driven franchises with some spectacularly bad results. Wolfenstein. Yeah, Wolfenstein, Young Blood wasn't too... Um, yeah, wasn't too... Uh, Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2, yes. <laughs> My issue isn't that women can't have a go. My favourite game series for decades is as a female 
main character in it. It's what uh, has been. It's that what has been made being male is now trying to be changed into female, but so it's somehow bad to be male, which mostly it isn't. Um, it's also a lazy grab for attention, uh, like it is with movies. Uh, let's make a, a decade-long franchise into girl power rather than create new play, I, female IP uh, with them leading it. So could be uh, cheaper. I, I think it'll be a fair call. You know, well, <laughs> I just they. Um, yeah, uh, making things that are, are like that, you know. I, yeah, well, they ruined Ghostbusters, didn't they? Well, where can we save money? Well, if we pay four guys a, a million bucks, but we get four chicks, we might only have to pay them 500. Well, yeah, sign them up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that could be a way of thinking. Yeah, he's, he's, Ben's just added here. He goes, I'd like to see more time invested in good stories and gameplay with less pandering and trying to be all inclusive. And um, I think we shall leave it. Yes. They're right there before we, right there. any of us say but, something. Yeah, before we get uh, taken off the air before our first show has even been done. But um, yeah, that's that's uh, how dare you for, for this week. And uh, yeah, we will be uh, moving along now into uh, Roy's review, isn't it? No, it's... I Roy think it, recommends. Well, Bam Nation recommends, because it might Bam not Nation necessarily recommends. be from me. But oh. um, what I... I mean, I've, I've over the last few months since I actually got Netflix, I was one of the late bloomers. Um, there's a show on there called The Toys That Made Us, which I came across, which is a pretty cool show, because it looks at the toys of my childhood. Um, and definitely toy franchise. Well, (laughs) I'm a little bit older than you, but basically it looks at the history of important toy lines which shaped people's childhoods of the 70s and 80s. And so far, episodes um, focus on the Star Wars franchise, He-Man, G.I. Joe, Barbie, Transformers, and Lego, there is a Hello yeah. Kitty one, and there's another yeah. one as well, but I just, I haven't got around to watching that because I don't have much interest in it. But um, there's also a Thud series coming next month in November, which is going to focus focus on um, My Little Pony, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Wrestling, and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Um, now, each show is based on a toy land, so you've got one episode is based on Star Wars. So it actually goes into the history of where they all originated. Um, and there are some very interesting stories, um, especially with the Star Wars franchise. Yeah. Which... He, in the... he just turned around and said, oh, you can have all the, the rights to the, the merchandising, mate. Have well, that little, little faith in, in Star Wars. They... Yeah, would, would George Lucas actually pitched it to the big toy companies at the time. And they all said they all weren't interested. And Kenner, who was like, I think they had one level in a a multi-story building. That was their office, was like level 15 of some building. And I can't can't remember where it was. Um, But basically, they turned around and said to George, well, we'll take on the toy line and we'll give you two cents for every figure that we sell. And George went, yeah, fine. No worries. And it turned out to be you know, one of the biggest toy franchises of all time. Um, now, uh, just, just just quickly, um, when Disney bought LucasArts, did they buy the franchising rights to it? I think or did George Lucas still own them? No, nah, they sold everything out. I mean, everything that Star Wars now comes out with Disney on the box. And I, if you, I've looked at it as well because there are toy lines that actually still will reference Kenner in some way or form but I think Kenner became Hasbro they were bought out at some point in between the um, the original tr- original trilogy and the the next trilogy somewhere along the lines Kenner did end up losing out um, it was also interesting to see that they bought out um, like they pretty much made up ships that 
were never in the movie, but they made out like, oh, remember on Hoth? Well, this this vehicle here was like off screen in the background, and you can't really see it, but yeah, it was there. Um, and th- they've got like a whole line of, of these vehicles that, that they produce for that. Um, the Transformers one was interesting because how Transformers basically started was as a Japanese um, a Japanese toy that um, an American toy company came across at a convention in Tokyo, I think, um, and then took it back to America and basically said, well, how are we going to sell these toys? And their idea was, fuck it, let's make a Saturday morning cartoon and a fucking comic. And the next thing you know, you've got a franchise that has gone from the 80s right up to today and we're up to, you know, Michael Bay blowing up the planet movies. Um, mm. it, it's interesting to see the history of these toys, where they've come from to where they are today. Um, and it's also cool to see some of the toys that we played as played with as a kid and you actually watch it and you go, oh, I remember I had that or Johnny Down the Street had that. Or I remember because, you know, back in my day, not everyone had money and not everyone could buy a whole collection of toys. So, you know, one of my friends, he'd have a couple of, he might have a couple of Decepticons and I might have a couple of Autobots, you know, and you just kind of, you know. Play battles. Yeah, and, and, and you know, oh, I'll, I'll swap your toy for the night so you can take that home. You know what I mean? Like, everyone, yeah. it was it was a cool little thing. And, you know, it's, I think each episode goes for about, on average, 40, 45 minutes. Um, and it's a cool little show. Um, and I'm interested to see where it comes, where it goes to next, especially in the next series where you've got Ninja Turtles and wrestling. Um, because now you've missed out on my favourite one here, which I have actually watched in this series, and that is Lego. I watched it too, but I could have spoken about it. But uh, I'm not one to steal your thunder. Just awesome! Like I absolutely love the 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 story, whole story behind Lego and all that kind of stuff, and and how it started off, and and what what it went through, and uh, they were were making toys in in Denmark, and then just. Denmark. Well, they were making wooden toys in the beginning. Wooden toys, and then uh, they started moving on to aluminium toys, and then the war happened, and the aluminium was sparse, uh, sparse, and then they uh, turned into these uh, molds for for plastic and that, and they bought out the first Lego bricks, but then they didn't join together, and then they uh, went around the the patents and and made it all. Uh, so the the join they actually joined together and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, when they actually started bringing out the, the the sets and how they never wanted to have weaponry or anything like that in them, so and there were uh, certain colours they did like they brought out there were certain sets they brought out and went we can't make this green because green's like the colour of a tank and we don't want yeah we don't want to make them the, I think it was the first castle set that they brought out and uh, yeah they didn't want to they made it yellow because they didn't want to make it. Uh, yeah, they couldn't fit, so they didn't want to make, keep making tanks out of them, <laughs> uh, out of the, the Lego, but yeah, and then when they started franchising out, so, um, well, when they started uh, buying the IPs, I think that, that Star Wars was the first IP to go under under Lego, because they were actually going through a really bad time, and they actually almost shut down uh, a couple of times over it, and they, they said, like, when uh, Episode 1 came out of Star Wars, and they bought all the sets out, and they were really well received, and uh, sold heaps and heaps of them. And then the next year, they released a, another set of Star Wars, and it uh, sold nothing because uh, there wasn't a Star Wars movie <laughs> out that year to to kind of add to it. So uh, yeah, but that's come a long long way. Like I know that you've got a couple of sets now of of the uh, Star Wars Lego. Uh, I'm a big fan of across the top of my. Um, uh, computer screens here. I've actually got all my little mini figures on Lego tape, so you can get like a a tape now, which has got all the like the the bumps in it, so you can put all your your mini oh, figures. Oh, they have this. that, do they? Yeah, yeah. So it's like a, a tape, and um, I've actually got that, that sitting across the top of my monitors, and all my mini figures set up there. Uh, my wife got me a uh, Star Wars Lego Advent Calendar, 
like here. So um, like one day you'll have a a um, a mini figure in there. The next day you'll have a little mini AT AT or um, yeah, I've got a BB-8 and, and all those kind of things That's in there. It. It's I, I guess the toys that made us. It started off as a as a web series documentary. It's turned into something. It's on Netflix. I think it it'll keep going. Um, and I, it just looks at the icon toy lines of the late twentieth century that you know we all grew up with. Well, what do you what what do you really want to see on it? Um, I just like a bit. Of, like I'm a I like a bit of history, seeing where yeah. things and the funny stories along with it. Um. Like the guy that you know, the star. There's a Star Trek episode, and basically one of the guys bought the. Well, his story was he he bought the licensing rights to produce Star Trek toys for five thousand dollars, US, cool. and ended up making fifty million, and within the space of ten years ended up in jail for fraud, and you know, it's, it's, yeah, <laughs> and and his you know he just sits there and goes ah shit happens, but you know it's it's this, those funny stories that. The rise and fall of how people, you know, get their hands on these things, and it's also interesting to see how far sometimes people will go to to make money, like making up toys and like the He Man. I think they just made figures up just to get them on the shelves to to make money. Um, and then, and I guess as it as it moves in today toys are kind of like you've got two markets for toys you've got the ones that you buy and give to your kids to totally destroy in the garden um or whatever they do with them and then you've got toys for the serious collector um yeah. like i've got they're probably not worth anything but they're still in the box and they're still um you know never been opened um just because the the thought of yeah. one day it might make money um, well, I've got like figurines and stuff like that there, like lots of figurines and, and all that. I think that the big one uh, these days that's coming out is these these pop bonds. I think that that's that's um, that'll be one of the next ones. I think that could, could really come through on these toys. But uh, the the like I've got World of Warcraft figurines. I've got a really nice set of um, Assassin's Creed from uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So I have uh, Kenway. Kenway, I think it is, and um, uh, Blackbeard. And so yeah. I have the, the, the really nice uh, collector figurines of those, and uh, like Tim Burton's Tragic Toys for Girls and Boys, and all those kind of things. That uh, just stuff that I'll, I'll never uh, take out of a box, and, <laughs> and uh, will always be a, a nice part of my collection. And uh, yeah, and uh, the... the other ones is the, the Lego sets. Like I just look, just love them. Well, I've still got some from 19 canteen and boxes, and I've still got the boxes. The boxes are still in pretty decent condition. I've built them up. I've built them down and put them back into the plastic bags and separated them all out. Um, and but um, so that's the Netflix, the toys that made us. Um, if you've got a bit of time and a rainy day, um, sit back, relax, and and check it out. And the final thing I took away from that was I, I, I was reminded once again of the mighty, mighty GoBots, the Kmart Transformers. Kmart <laughs> <laughs> Transformers. Yes, and uh, it's the same as the Legos and all those kind of things. Like oh. I picked up little uh, like Pokemon ones and, and stuff like that there that come in the box. And uh, my in-laws, I think I've put up a, a picture before on the page, my in-laws actually bought me a... Uh, Avengers 2 Age of Ultron um, minifigure of uh, Space Batman. <laughs> that was that that was the the funniest thing on that Lego show was just how many people have tried to rip off yeah. and f- and failed at it. No one's yeah. actually been able to. Mm. So this uh, yeah, this Chinese little knockoff Chinese. Uh, Minifigure has got uh, Avengers 2 on it, but it comes with Supergirl, Green Arrow, Wonder Woman, <laughs> Cyborg, and Space Batman. So, um, was so that from the What If series? Uh, yeah. yeah, one of those, um, yeah, it frustrates me extremely every time I look at that box. But anyway, uh, moving on to uh, our little final 
uh, basically she's uh, Thorncliffe's Thorncliffe's uh, salty, salty sermon. sermon. Yes. Yeah, so uh, this week, I think I'd, I'd like to start it off rather light with. Uh, just basically, I want to talk about uh, subscription services. So we've just gone through a little bit of Netflix just then. We were talking about it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, we've got a whole heap of new subscriptions uh, out there at the moment, and I've worked it all out that if I want to have nearly every one of these, uh, I would be up for nearly $200 a month just in subscription <sighs> services. So uh, we're looking at things like Netflix, Foxtel Now, Stan, Amazon uh, or your Twitch Prime. We used to have Presto here. We've got Disney Plus coming out. Then we go to the gaming where we've got EA Access, Xbox Live, Xbox Games Pass, Xbox Game Pass Plus, uh, or Ultimate, PS Plus, Humble Bundle, Humble Monthly, PlayStation Now, Utomic, Origin Access, Uplay Plus, and Apple Arcade, which is coming out as well soon. Uh, I think it's already you know out. What? There is so many things out there at the moment. And Spotify, you know Apple Music. Is. Yeah, we'll keep on going further on from yeah. The Spotify is, is something that that um you know I had I had used to have Audible as well, where once a month I'd get a, a free audio book and and all these kind of things. The ones that promise you the world, and uh, in the end you go, I'm not even using this. Like uh, okay, so so Netflix is 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 one of the the staples here in Australia that. That most of the people have. It's just going to set you back fourteen dollars a month, usually for about two or three screens. You can get a four K version, which is going up again to another twenty dollars or twenty two dollars a month for the four K version of of Netflix. Um, <laughs> so Netflix is, is one that that I've got for for certain exclusives on there that that I like to watch. So I like Lucifer and. Uh, I liked the, the Blacklist <laughs> when that was on there. Uh, big Mouth, F is for Family, uh, are big ones that, that I, I like to watch. I like Netflix for the American comedy originals, so the stand-up comedies. Ah, oh, yes, the, yeah. Most yeah. of them are shit, but there are a few gems in there. like That new Sticks and Stones one by um, Dave Chappelle, absolutely hilarious. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. He uh, me up from uh, F is for Family. That's one for the the cartoon that you should should really get to. They've got a lot of the old Bill something. Hicks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but Netflix, I pay nine ninety five, and basically you have to queue up to get onto it because I'm not paying any more than that. Um, <laughs> you know, can I and like? I think we've got about. I think Louise, my wife, was telling me we've got four different Netflix accounts in this house. Like, so yeah. I've got my one, which I use in the bedroom and the TV, and um, <clears throat> I logged on to my parents' house because being old people, they don't get modern technology. Yeah. Um, then my daughter has Netflix, which I don't care, it's her money. <laughs> And she can watch whatever the hell she wants. Then Louise has a Netflix account for school because yeah. there are certain TV shows or children's TV shows that she will um, log in and get the kids to watch as a reward for doing good schoolwork. Yeah. Um, and, like, I've got Foxtel, and I pay the premium for Foxtel, um, basically because I have to because of certain shows that my wife watches that you've basically got to have the whole kit caboodle. But Netflix is coming to Foxtel soon. Um, I noticed in the small print, you do need a Netflix subscription to be able to access the Netflix side of Foxtel. Um, I do have Amazon Prime. Yes, I've got Amazon Prime. But I, I use that through my, yeah, well, through Twitch. Amazon Prime. Through that. It's... But I use it through Amazon Prime. So we actually bought Amazon Prime so that when we buy stuff off Amazon, we get the the, the free shipping and all those kind of things. So. Um, the, there, there is a lot of, I, I think when you go through them all, and this is the worst part, all of them have TV shows or shows or movies that you will watch. Yep. And a lot of them have a lot of shit. Yep. And. Stan, um, do you have Stan? No. Okay, so Stan's the other one that I. I'm not um, a fan of Stan. I don't know. Fuck, like, I'm a Foxtel kid. 
you know, I, I grew up with Foxtel. I'm just... I've never that's... had it. Uh, I think I, I got Foxtel at the start of the year. I uh, got the month free of Foxtel now and then paid for a month so I could watch the final series of Game of Thrones. Yeah. It's still and, around. Um, then I was kind of salty because uh, the Chernobyl was up to series uh, episode three at the time. And I wasn't going to uh, renew again and pay another $25 just to watch two episodes when I could pay $14 right now on the PlayStation Store and download the movie, uh, the, the whole series. So A BMMK yeah. reactor. That was actually a good series, actually, Noble. Yeah. Yeah, I watched the first three, three episodes. It was good. And the one that's coming out soon, Disney Plus. Yes. Now, this is a, a definite yes for me, for the one simple fact is that I will be getting to watch The Mandalorian on it. And there's another thing as well they're, they're putting on there as well. What's that? There's a Mandalorian. There's a something else. I forget. It's a cartoon oh, Star Wars. Thing. Aren't they bringing out a new... Um... Kenobi. Kenobi. That's it. Yeah. There's... um. Oh, the Disney one, I th- I, what I've noticed is... is um. Disney's taking a lot of their stuff off all the other streaming services. Yeah, so there was a one-year, uh, I think it was a one-year deal with Stan for all of the Marvel and Disney movies to be on there. So that was one of the the, the, the factors that I had with, with having um, Stan as well was they, they had the full range of all the, the Marvel and all that kind of stuff on there. But, uh, yeah, that was only a year-long deal. But and, uh, uh, yeah. so at the end of the day, we've got all these streaming services. It's you not know, fair. Watch one at a time. Uh, Amazon has got a couple of really decent um, originals on there. So Jack you know, Ryan. I've, I've really got to have a look at um, you now what I'm going to <laughs> to get rid of for, for Disney. So. But where do we find the fucking time to watch all this shit? And play games, and we don't but do chores. All necessities that we need to have, isn't it? So uh, moving on to the gaming side of things, though, there's like uh, so Xbox Live and and PS Plus are kind of things that you really just have to have, um, just for for your online gameplay and and all that kind of stuff. Uh, game Pass, I think it's ten dollars if you just want it on the Xbox. It's about sixteen or seventeen dollars if you want it. The ultimate, they get it on PC as well. Well, you can have it for two uh, months for two bucks. I think that's what I saw. Yeah, that was what what happened with. Uh, I think that was at, at was it at, at E three or uh, when they they first announced it. I think, but um, I think it's when yeah. you first sign up. Yeah, yeah. So the game pass is is really good. Um, you know, like I, it's something I think that I'd like to see on PlayStation. Uh, but. Then again, I think it, it, it might really take away from the actual earnings of the the, the titles, you know, like... Uh, well, let me, let me... Like Gears 5, if you had Ultimate Game Pass, you got it like a couple of days early and for free, you know? Like it was, it's just... How are you... Exp- well, because they're a first-party studio, I guess there's, there's not really that much of a, a... them losing out too much on it, but... You know, I, I I don't think it could you could see it happening with with um like Santa Monica Studios for God of War or uh, Naughty Dog for Last of Us Two and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the exclusives that PlayStation has, I don't think that it'd work under that model. Um, Even though I'd like to see it. Well, he, I think somewhere in the near future. In terms of gaming streaming, I think it's going to go somewhere like, now this is just my thinking, you've got the Google Stadia, which is basically a streaming device, yeah. you've got an Xbox that looks like it's moving towards Play streaming, digital. Yeah, and, and, and streaming, um, mm. I think it'll be, it'll come to a point where you pay us nineteen ninety five, and you can just stream the games and who, who will that then 
limit the quality of the things coming out because what is the point of continuing on developing if we're not going to be making money off it? No, but I think that they will make money. Somehow they'll make money because... But who makes the money though? Like when there's a... Is it PlayStation or is it Sony that turn around and say, I am going to buy uh, this game off you for... Let's just just make it... I'm going to buy this game off you for $100,000 and I'm going to put it on my service and if we get a million downloads, we get a million downloads. But if we get 10 downloads, we get 10 downloads. At the end of the day, they're still getting their 1995 out of how many people? Yeah, but Microsoft and Sony are the ones getting out of that. Whereas Naughty Dog, who will sell 100 million copies of well, however many million copies of, of The Last of Us. But they're, they're, they're going to have to pay money to Sony anyway to get the thing really, or, and Xbox to get the game released on mm. those platforms. Um. I don't know. I, I mean, it's the it's the whole DRM thing all over again. I think um, where uh, even with the, the the PS4 and the Xbox uh, One, I think it was Xbox that came out originally saying they're going to have DRM on all their games, and you won't be able to um, trade them in and uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think that well, there's a black uh, market for that. You know, like. Yeah. Here's the question. You trade in a game or, you know, and then it gets resold. Mm -hmm. Is any of that money going back to the developers? No, and that's why it costs so much to buy the game originally, I think. (laughs) It will come down to it. I think that this, possibly PS5, Xbox 2 or... um, Xbox, whatever they want to call their next one, um, I think that uh, they will be the last of the consoles with a disk drive. I think it will all go straight digital, and I think it will all go straight onto the the, um, the PlayStation Live Store. It will be the end of the GameStops, the EB Games, and all that kind of stuff, which I think that, that they can already see. They're, they're switching over to a lot of uh, pop culture kind of things and opening stores like Zing and, and all those kind of things. But I think that they they can see that the end is, is coming and uh, I believe that strongly that the, the next generation that comes out will be the last generation which does have a disk drive. Everything will go digital. It will not necessarily go streaming because Australia can't handle that. We can't even handle PlayStation now with PS1 games, you know. Um, so, Well, there is an uh, increase in data centres. In mm. and around the country, and that's all I'll say about that because you know these data centers they're being built for one one purpose and one purpose only, and that is for the you know I think it's for that kind of service where everything's online. Yep. It's um. Yeah, I don't. I don't... And the and the quality of service you get will be determined by whether or not how much you pay. No, and and whether you are in close enough proximity to said data center. Yeah, well, it's kind of the same as well. Like how far you're away from the point of your your node for your um or well, your telephone exchange and stuff like that. There really depends on what kind of speed you're getting here at the moment. So yeah. But anyway, like the, even the other, okay, so we'll just uh, quickly go through like the, the developer-specific ones. So EA Access, um, Origin Access, which is the same. So uh, EA Access has just come out on to PlayStation. Kind of annoying, though, because your EA Access account from your PlayStation and your Xbox account are not joined together. Um, so you've got to pay for them separately if you want to do that. <sighs> and same as your Origin Access on your your PC, so uh, yeah, you play plus most expensive out of the lot twenty dollars a month uh, is you know you play and uh, Ubisoft have some some cracker titles and uh, yeah, but but twenty dollars a month for for that I don't think that that's that's a, a really worthwhile investment. 
Um, because what's that? Two hundred and forty dollars a year. Well, there's gonna be buy. there's fans oh, for right. everything. Someone's gonna pay for something. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's gonna go away, but. Um, so I find myself sometimes I like uh, doing it for a month to turn it off. Do this for a month to turn it off, just because. You know, like EA Access, so I want to play Battlefield 5 when it first comes out, so I'll put a $5 down on that so I can play it. Um, same as your, your Xbox Game Pass. I paid for it for a month so I could play Gears, Gears 5. Um, I did it with the WWE Network. So you could watch WrestleMania? Uh, no, it wasn't so much that. It was something else. I forget, but... I had it for a, I had it for a couple of months and then um, just got rid of it. And then when I got rid of it, I was bombarded with, "Oh, we've noticed that you are no longer signing into your WWE network. Please." So it's just. Uh, and they make it so hard to turn it off. Do you notice that? Yeah. When you go onto the website. <laughs> you got to click on this page, that page, the next page. Then you've got to sell your soul, and then you've got to. Yeah. Your third so there's daughter. that there. There's WWE Network now. I think there's a UFC Fight Pass or something like that. Oh, there's um, a, oh, what's the other one? Uh, ba, 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 the I pay for an NRL account. So because I don't have Foxtel, I pay three dollars a week on the the NRL account to watch your team every... get humped. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll be watching your team get humped tomorrow. It's all good. No, buddy. Yes. No. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just um. So that's where my little salty sermon is coming in. It's just a, the pure prices of these. As I said, you'd be up to upwards of nearly $200 a month here on these things. And something interesting I was reading as well for for people out there that are around uh, our age or a little bit younger that are looking for home loans and all that kind of stuff, uh, these things here can be quite detrimental when when looking through for, for loans and all those kind of things as well because um, apparently they when they go through your your bank statements with a, a fine tooth comb and they see all these little things popping up for for stuff like this they kind of go on the um they say they kind of go against you because it's it's <laughs> they're watching how you spend your money and um yeah why you need all these kind of things so this guy's a lazy bastard he's got four subscription services obviously he's not fucking doing much <laughs> yeah <laughs> Why lend him a dollar? Fuck, I, I, I didn't think of it that way. But. Yeah, but um, yeah, they see all these little things popping up, same as little microtransactions and, and all those kind of things, you know, like a dollar here, a dollar there. Uh, will That's add up. why you have two yeah. accounts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I run everything through a PayPal account. Mm. Yeah, I've got a couple of secret Secret accounts. Oh, I've got. Yeah, don't worry, your wife won't be listening to this anyway. Oh, she already knows. Like, oh, what the hell did you buy this for? On this? Oh, fuck me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there it is. Um, any suggestions or anything like that that anybody has for what they'd like me to uh, discuss for all these uh, little salty sermons at the end of a, a show, and uh, you just can all let me know, shoot us a, a comment or wherever you were listening to this from and uh yeah i'll um have a look into it well that brings us to the end of episode one of the bam nation podcast and hopefully you're still awake and listening uh, be sure to give us your feedback on what you guys want to hear about if you haven't already be sure to follow bam nation on facebook and my name is roy and i am thornford and until next time I'll let you do the honours. You'll let me do the honours? Yeah. BAM! <laughs> Catch us next time. <laughs>